good afternoon everybody and welcome to our midweek episode of Topical Talkology. And today's going to be a little bit of a mismatch because on this very rare occasion we have two very special guests who listen to our podcast and have, def- have some very definite opinions about certain things. And um, because we rarely get people coming in at 8 o'clock in the morning to when we do our podcast, uh, we decided to do this afternoon special so we could actually include them. So it is going to be a bit of a mishmash. It's going to be a bit of an open uh, mic session is the best way to actually describe it. And um, I'd like to say to welcome to Alexis. And, um, Yogi, welcome. 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 Thanks, thanks for having me. Thank us. you very much. Thank you. Okay, how are you, Theo? I'm very well. How are you? Okay, yeah, great. Okay, fine. Let's get over the formalities. You, know, you got screwed yesterday, didn't you? But that's that's I did, story. I did, get, I did get screwed yesterday. Yes, but anyway, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's another matter. No, absolutely not. No, but it cost me a lot. It cost me a lot of money. You did limit the depth of the screen. Oh, I did. I did limit the depth. Anyway, let's get let's get started. So. Um, first thing we were going to actually start talking about was right and wrong. Is it just a matter of opinion or is it fact? Or is it based on evidence or is it just based on opinion? Because all this seems to be happening at the moment. So particularly, um, you see a lot of things about this Me Too campaign, for example, as one aspect is women just actually have to have the opinion that they're being harassed for a guy to be able to lose his job. So now what's happening is a lot of men are actually sort of back, you know, they're coming back at this and they're making the decision, why should I employ a woman if I can actually have the potential of being accused of being sexually harassed without any particular, without any evidence? So, things like that. That's what we're going to be talking about. So let's get started. Theo. Okay. Well, I mean, there is, there is, there's only truth and there are infinite numbers of opinions. There's only truth. There's one truth, but there are infinite numbers of opinions. But it doesn't truth depend on one person's point of view? It, uh, no, it doesn't. There's, there is only one truth in terms of what's good for people, in terms of what's true for a certain situation. Um, but there's an infinite number of interpretations of, the, of a certain situation. doesn't mean they're right, doesn't mean they're valid, but there is one truth. No, 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 no. It's one truth to them. I mean, let's face it, the left have a very different truth to me. Okay. I think you've got two truths. You've got legal and the moral. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So legal and moral. Yeah. So, so I'll give you an example with the legal. Those are, those are guidances. No, but they're guidances, but they are what we know as truths, where they've originated from law. We all know the laws and us. We still need certain rules. If not, we'll have anarchy in society and everybody will just be killing each other. Correct. Like and... and <coughs> And there's the Socratic, Socratic uh, principle of, of the uh, requirement to follow the law, even if you don't agree with it, otherwise it would be key. It's known yeah. as the rule of law. It's, uh, it's known as the rule of law okay. as a concept. It's, um, well, in the olden days, they had religion, didn't they? And religion was saying that God was the moral enforcer. Yes. So if you did something contrary to religion, then uh, you would be punished in the afterlife or uh, in hell, heaven, whatever. So effectively to replace that system we now have something called the rule of law and I think it originates from our evolution as a species uh, from tribalism, right? As the tribe grew bigger and bigger and bigger it became necessary, I think, to have a sort of body to enforce laws that was agreed upon by society. So I've actually just had this conversation last night, so it's fresh in my, in my mind. With respect to anarchy, there is, uh, well, there's a comment about that. Anarchy, I think, is a nice concept that no one person's opinion should take precedence over another person's opinion, but, uh, oh no, one, not, not, not opinion, rights. Not, no one person's rights should take over, take precedence over the other person's rights, but if becomes not self-sustaining when the system grows past a certain Actually, you, you bring a very good point up because actually I, I was in court yesterday and I uh, had to deal with the big guns yesterday in court. And here's the question I want to actually ask. How accurate is the law? Because you say we actually have law to, for it to be sustainable and everything, but it seems to me that law these days is only as good as how good your lawyer is how good the information that is being presented, how it's being presented, and how it is how it is being perceived. So it doesn't really actually have to take a no element of truth. It just has to be able to create 
the perception of what is true or what is not and the delivery of that. Um, and it's the same when it comes to politics as well, when you're electing a candidate. What's helpful, I think, is to frame law, what is law, to frame how it comes about. There's two ways it comes about. One is legislative law, which is decided in Parliament. And the other one, and Parliament, mind you, is meant to be a representation of what the people want. And the second way is common, which is a series of precedents. So a series of arguments that go higher, higher up in the courts till you reach the Supreme Court. And when something is said in the Supreme Court, it's deemed as having having gone through enough rigorous argument to then pass into... But, but if I may, we, we started with right and wrong is in an opinion right. yeah my, my my great point that I want to make with the going back to media that again have too much control in anything uh, look at the American courts as an example where very rarely does a supreme judge or an American judge say and they're starting to do a little bit more often now where they actually close the court to the media mm. look at the OJ trial look at other trials where the, actually the media has taken such a, has created such a spin on you know, or helped that particular yes. victim or defendant. Yes. A defendant was actually let off or had a, a, a an easier time in jail. Pistorius. Pistorius is another example because of who they are rather than what they did. Yeah. yeah. Um, look at public opinion, so to speak, where everyone gets judged regardless, and that's more of a moral court. You see, so someone might mm -hmm. be let off legally, but depending on how the media wants to spin it they're going to get judged by society from a moral context and there's implications for that yeah. well, the, the, I mean there is a book called Moral Law and um, it's something that judges don't really seem to take into consideration when they're making the decisions they just look at the point of law as facts of what is presented and they don't take the other considerations or the grey matter if you actually want to call it into consideration when they actually make their decisions um, so for example a woman killing her husband because she's been abused for X amount of years could very well be a murderer in the eyes of the law but in some cases if the if her lawyer hasn't offended her properly in terms of how she's represented herself or how she's been represented then ultimately um, uh, and she did it for survival then she would uh, well, this, there have is to learn to take showers with a lot of other people yeah but this is <laughs> This is, there is an actual precedence that has come about. It's called the battered wife defense. Um, and it is when someone is being subjected to domestic violence for a long time and they snap and hit back. Um, you know, this is a legitimate defense. The problem is that what we in the public think happens in the court and what does happen in the court are very different. Uh, I think it would be nice to have more clarity on that and more education in the public. Judges also are trained. They have to be trained. And they have to be trained how to apply the law. And they're only as good as they're trained. But look at a recent example. There was, I forgot the guy. There's this guy, I'm not sure if it was a colored guy, I'm not sure who was. Oh, political aggress. Sorry, I just did that. Yeah. Uh, who was uh, stabbed by... Uh, by uh, exactly. Non exactly. Non -white. Stabbed by uh, one of his friends. Yes. That friend, I don't know what the age was, whether it was 16, 17, whatever, uh, actually got out on manslaughter. So when he put a knife into this guy's chest and killed him, he didn't intentionally need do that because he yeah. was young or underage. So because he was a kind of friend, but not really a friend for killing him, but because he was a friend initially... That makes it all right. So you have the law yeah, yeah. and the morally and the moral law Spencer, clashing. It's the concept of there has to be a clear intention to commit a crime for it to be culpable. And so, uh, you know, this is something that has to be decided on so what, evidence. So what I'm, what I'm hearing now from everyone is you're, you're all describing what certain aspects of society say is right so for instance the law will say this is the truth whereas we all know it's not it's the opinion of the law yeah. uh, if you speak to any lawyer and you ask them whether they would go to court they look as if you just stuck a pin up there behind they they are terrified of going to court for themselves every single solicitor will say never go to court you never know who's going to be against you you never know who the judge is going to be so that's that is the opinion of the people who apply the law okay they don't trust it but society has to live by it so that's that is one it's it's a legal it's not a legal even a legal truth it's just 
how you have to live in an ordered society. But I, but, but I think there, there is a, a, a moral code that I think is now getting looser or getting more blurred as the time goes by. I'll give you a great example. Um, I happened to be months ago accidentally speeding, of course, um, and my son was asking me why I have this ticket, what is it, what does it mean, why is it so much money, um, and I had to explain the difference between right and wrong. And he said, so, so daddy, you're only doing 135 kilometers an hour, and it's 130 whatever speed limit on the motorway on the continent where I live. And I said, yes. He said, but that's not really wrong, is it? That's just, you're only five kilometers over. He's a bright boy. And I went, surely, yeah, you're right. But again, we seem to be uh, blurring and being more casual in what's right and wrong. You know, we always say from the age of three months, you know what's right and wrong, crossing the road, uh, not swearing at your parents and your basic respect. Now it's, oh, no, you're only slightly over. So that's not really wrong. So there's like, a, there, there's like an in-between period between what used to be right and now because we're more informal and more relaxed in our attitudes in general, we seem to have foregone all these moral principles that actually got us through life and got us to operate a, as a society correctly and efficiently, if you like. And I was, no, that's not wrong, that's slightly wrong, but it's okay, it'll be fine. It's only a few kilometers. No, it's wrong. You can't have slightly speeding. You can't have a little bit of speeding. You're speeding. You can't slightly steal. You've stolen. <laughs> you know, and, and, and there's that blurred line now. Okay, thank you. So that Hold on a second, hold on a second. One question, one question. Have you ever gone into a shop and picked something up and accidentally walked out without, without paying? Yes. Yes, I've done it several times. Now, in the eyes of the law, as soon as I've stepped out of the store into, with, with that unpaid item, I have actually stolen. But um, no, Because men's real. We have to prove we had an intention to commit that crime. I'm not, actually. So how do I prove it? So how do I prove it? He's right. He's right. right. You are right. right. But how do you prove it? This is where the imperfection in the law comes from, is that we're all human, we're all fallible, it's evidence-based. What is one of the most intimate intimate crimes? One of the, and this is the thing why. Uh, so you, it's mens rea right, and actus rea, isn't it? Straight into the you know the controversial one. When we talk about rape, there's a big distinction between allegations and um, uh, actual convictions. And the reason I think behind this is because it is one of the most difficult crimes to prove. Because you know that's why they're having such a hard time tackling how to prevent it as a crime. It is an intimate crime. It is something that happens between two people where usually there aren't any cameras and there's very little evidence uh, or, or evidence collected. Can I take this a step further? Yeah, there's sure. one thing which is really close to my heart, sure. which is I, I'm surprised over the years how I've become with age a bit more tolerant, a bit more yeah. mature and easy going. A little bit more greyer? Greyer, <laughs> older, my body that don't want to think and agree with the rest. Yeah. But anyway... What I, what I find totally unacceptable, and this is where I'm going back, I'm becoming very draconian and going back maybe thousands of years, is paedophilia. Now, I've got two kids, yes. adore them to bits, and we were having, uh, I watched a film last night, very topical, watched a film last night, and it was about a, a young boy being abused by uh, his uh, foster parents, whatever it was, and it, it's one of the rubbish films that my wife watches, but we watched it together and it hit a moral a moral yeah, sort yeah. of uh, it's, it's uh, not morally it's just complete and that's the difference between opinion and law it's, it's just wrong yeah. and for me and um, I was you know in modern society blah 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 I said if there is a category case where somebody an adult over 18 without mental issues so I'm very careful what I'm saying actually abuses a child I would if I could I would chop his head off or literally burn him on, on, on the stick or yeah. in an electric chair or put him in a, in a confined cell because we live in a particularly correct society where we're not allowed so to take away the rights of a person are you saying even though they've foregone their rights this is, this is a sincere question are you saying that all I'm saying all of our ancestors were child abusers because this is, this is a legitimate question no no I'm no, saying that because it, it, I mean they got my, my great grand parents married when my great-grandmother was 12. That's not what I'm saying. Well, then that was a cultural thing as well, though, and the thing is, circumstances, have also, circumstances have also changed. My point, my point is... Back to truth again right and opinion. And wrong. Truth and opinion. Right for whom? Wrong for whom? 
You know, but everything look, has to be with a purpose. But, but it's an interpretation of the law as well. And, and if the law changes, then we... Why? We, we, the but, law is a guideline that is set by the people, for the people, as being right for society. You see, this at that time... But hold on, we have learned... We are, well, surely, you're not going to tell me that a child, somebody who is still growing up in the world, who is still in a modern country like Britain, still considered under the protected and... and under